Okay, uh, welcome back. It's time to lift from off the press uh, the headlines that made it to the front pages of the national dailies. And we have Opunabo in Kotaria, a public affairs analyst, joining us this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, Opunabo. Good morning, and good morning, Nigerians. Okay. Okay, right now we are going to do it, you know, it's like a marathon. Uh, we're starting with the leadership newspaper. Uh, let me uh, wear this. The leadership newspaper uh, has some headlines here. Tinubu makes changes, reassigns Oyetola, Tunji, Ojo, Momo, and others. And then troops get marching orders to read Niger Forest of terrorists, ministerial appointment, NPAN, congratulations, Adunadris. Okay. And um, 24 days after. 500 directors defy federal government's order to retire. Okay, so we're taking two headlines from here, the rearrangement of uh, the ministers and then the defiance of the uh, 500 directors for the uh, federal government's order. So let's begin with rearrangement of the ministers. What are your thoughts that uh, the president has already rearranged uh, these ministers and changed their portfolios before the inauguration, I think, holding today? Well, it really doesn't change. Probably, uh, Mr. President would have uh, heard or listened to the criticisms that told his uh, nominations and the portfolios assigned to the nominees. Maybe, because uh, why I said maybe is I don't think this is a, a government that has a listening ear. So probably he must have listened, or there is a lot of pressure from within. You know, and which I think is most likely the case. A lot of pressure from within, that is within the caucus, to say, no, I think Mr. A should handle this portfolio, Mr. B should handle this portfolio. But it is far from competence. It's far from putting square pegs in square holes. Why did I say that? Because the, uh, the former commissioner, who is now a minister, I forgot his former commissioner in Lagos State, who was also the presidential spokesman. Dele Alake. When the, Dele Alake. Ought to have gone to information and so on. So it's not based on competence, I don't think so. I think it's just based on internal politics. That's, that's what it's, it's all about. Okay. So um, retirement, age, whatever reason, and uh, the d uh, directors were supposed to retire, but they have defied that order and they're still staying on. What does that say about uh, the Nigerian civil service or anything else? Your comments, please. Impunity is it, it reigns supreme in this country, especially when it is believed that you are well connected. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you there, even before now, there was a police com a police assistant commissioner of police or uh, chief CSP who was retired. It went viral and refused to vacate the office. If you remember, even his juniors had to walk into force him out of the office. That is how shameless and how as pathetic our situation, the civil service or the government is in this country. But as if you attain retirement age, it is automatic. In fact, in those days, people were looking forward to it. That, 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 that's, I'm talking of uh, the days of our fathers and so. They are looking forward to it because they had worked for probably about 35 years and they needed to rest. And of course, they knew they were going to be paid their gratuities and their pensions were on and so on. But this time around, you tell these directors to retire, they retire, they ask you to wear. Because of the kind of monies they steal from the ministry. Don't forget that the highest office in any ministry is a director. Every other thing is an appointment. The highest rank is a director. And the palm sex are just appointments. They choose from one director. It's like the uh, police force. The highest rank in the police force is the Commission of Police. AIG, DIG, and IG are political appointments. That's why you can just take a CP and make him an IG. You see? But you can't just take somebody, a DSP, and make him a CP. No. But you can take a CP and make him an IG. A lot of people are not aware of these facts. So in terms of the directors, most of them, because they are probably well connected, or probably in the system they live, if Tinibu is serious, why, why I'm saying this is, most of them have refused to go because they feel that they have their tap roots in the ministries and in the government. But it's very simple. If Tinibu is serious, all they need to do is give a matching order. 
because you are stopping the growth of the next person and you're also earning the salary you ought not to earn. What you're supposed to earn now is pension. You're supposed to get your pensions and gratuities. And of course, we all know that the pensions, the gratuities, and the tax of office are quite you know, different from the salaries you get. So <coughs> they are robbing others and at the same time robbing the government. Because if probably your pension is, your salary is uh, 100,000, and your pension probably could have been 50 or 60,000 or 40,000. What happens to the, the 60,000 you're still collecting on top? Then what happens to the promotion of your younger ones? Because until that office is vacant, you can't promote anybody into that office. And the most important question to ask is, why are you still there? It has to be investigated. Why are you still there? You have this number. Because probably they've been in civil service for so long, so they've come to know each other, and they've tried to form a force. No, we will not allow this. You cannot. But it's possible to happen in this country because it's a lawless society. It's a society with impunity. So it's possible it can happen. How can you attend the retirement place and you come to say you are not going to go? Just send it to the policeman to go and kick them out, just as you did to that CSP. Okay. So let's send them to kick them out and stop their salaries. Hmm. Stop their salaries. I would have said they are, they are conniving with uh, the ministers, but we have just, we don't even have ministers. They are about to be spending today. But I hope that the ministers will also work on this. Their salaries will be stopped. Well, now that any money they receive from the time they have, they were supposed to have left, they should be made to refund. It's a criminal offense. Because <laughs> your service was not extended. Your service could have been extended. It is between the virus or the president or the governor. But who extended the service? Nobody. So you've been stealing money. You're not receiving salary. You're stealing money. That's what they're doing. So they should be charged. Like a MFL, charged like uh, the ESCC. The SCC. But I'm so happy with the MFL and the ESCC. Let them feel the pinch, what others feel, <laughs> when they do the same thing to them, especially the ESCC. Guy. So I am happy with what is going on. I'm happy. The only anger is that it's a stress. Is, is the disobedience of court orders and transgression of law. But in all honesty, I am very happy. Let them keep them there for 20 years. But then it will become illegality. Mm. Femi Fala and I that's say, and I've gone to court. The, I said that's the, only sad, that's, that's the only sad aspect of this. Yeah. Disobedience of law and transgression of, disobedience of courts and transgression of law. But now, yes. ordinarily, oh, I'll, it's like locking up Buari today, I'll be very happy. <laughs> okay, let's move forward because to the point newspaper. To, da, to Dasuki and Co. I want all of them to feel this thing. Mm -hmm. So that all that, they say when they throw the front falls into a pit, all that stay caution. Mm -hmm. So that you will know that the rain does not fall on the one who is in it. It falls on all of yes. So let them feel that pinch and cry. Maybe people have just started crying. He has, he will cry, you shed blood. He has just started. He will shed blood. Oh, well. You know, you attain a certain height and you believe you've been insulated from all kinds of problems God has blessed you. But you don't know. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So it's good. They have not started. I think you see detention is there. Now they're taking it to the SS detention. Let me feel detention. <laughs> Let it feel how it feels to be in detention and disobeying court orders. That is it. Mm. Now you're running back to the very courts. To the very court. You disobey the court order, but you're running then. back to the very court. How ridiculous. Yes. Okay, so the Point true. newspaper is also leading with FG prioritizes economy security as ministers take oath today. So, I... Oh, uh, Maureen, but, Maureen, some of this, okay, it's, 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 it's a newspaper. It's, what, are you bothered about all the rhetorics? No, I want to move forward from that. I want to move forward from that because we've touched on it <laughs> to Niger, right on top of the Punch newspaper. Uh -huh. Niger, ECOWAS uh -huh. rejects Junta's three year transition plan. They say they will transition. Yeah, they will okay, transition ahead. in three years. True. Go ahead, go ahead. It was, it was, I think it was on the sister station. I was doing the analysis and I said to them that was before the ECOWAS drew up their plans or made known their, their transition plan. And I said, I said this, what the junta will do is simple. They will agree to discuss. But if you listen quite carefully, they said they are to discuss 
the effect of the sanctions. They cleverly avoided, as at that time, mm. the issue of handing over to Japan. Now, let me also uh, return to what I said. It would be extremely folly for the junta to hand over power to the industry and hand over to the ousted president, the same man that they have, they, they remove from office. No matter the promises made, that don't worry, we'll not come out. First and foremost, once they hand over, they'll be retired. Then they have lost their powers as military colonels and generals and whatever. That is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, only a man with a mental, severe mental case will allow such generals who toppled him to remain. Because even the law will allow them to prosecute them for treason. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why will you take such a risk to restate that man? What will happen is they will come up with a program, a transition program, and allow somebody else to take over from them when they decide to leave. Mm -hmm. this, this was my analysis on the sister so just before they came up with it. And I said, listen, watch carefully. You will find out that they will come up with a timetable. And it will take them minimum of one year to release this power. Now they are even saying three years. Mm -hmm. Because they are ready for war. These human beings are ready for war. They have the backings of other countries. And don't forget that in times of war, in times of war, you don't know the casualties. You cannot predict it. Look at Russia and look at Ukraine. Look at uh, uh, Libya. Look at uh, Iraq. Look, I mean, the, the, the examples are bound. They are ready. And they know that the first targets are going to be the seven northern states. And it's going to cascade. And that's why the doctor are say, we don't need war. Allow these people to rule. After all, almost all leaders, what is his name, uh, this man, uh, Trump, he had he plotted a coup, but it was false, it failed. It was a civilian coup. Everywhere, every four, four years, every five, five years, they plot coups in Africa, civilian coups. Some of them, like in Togo, your grandfather took over, your father took over through the barrel of the gun, handed over to somebody, you are there now for how many years? When they go in, they tweak the constitution. Mm -hmm. I stay for 20 years. What of Cameroon? What? I mean, what are we talking about? I will leave Nigeria to the court next to the national. No, we know it was a civilian coup. Mm. Disagree. Just quickly disagree. Quickly disagree. So that the NBC doesn't come from disagree. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Nigeria. Yeah, quickly, quickly, and back, right? quickly. Yeah. But it was a coup. It was a coup. Well, that's your because opinion. That, that's we your also, opinion. We also, mm -hmm. what MCO Luman, we also what MCO Luman Co. did. I'm from River State. You saw what happened. Is that, look, once there is a transgression, once it is not a reflection of the people's will, what is it called? It's a coup, man. That's the truth. Even if it's in one, one, one pulling unit, it's not supposed to be like that. Well, well that, I think, again, I said that's your opinion. The case is in court. We're waiting the judgment. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I said. It's my opinion. That's yeah. what, so the point I'm trying to make is, what locals have you? You remember they kept telling the Western world after the election not to interfere that as a result of our sovereignty. That's what they kept saying. Mm -hmm. That is also their sovereignty. You don't appropriate that report. That is also their sovereignty. You cannot come and tell me that, no, that is uh, a, a, an illegal government. Who told you it's an illegal government? It is this country that will say if the government is legal or not. Not you. You can't come and tell. What if I don't want to democracy? Britain is practicing, practicing parliamentary system of government. America is practicing the... Practicing the, the uh, Presidential. Uh, what is this? Presidential. Sorry? Presidential. 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 Morocco is practicing what? Monarchy. So who told you that it, I must practice your? And I always tell people, they say, the worst form of 
uh, civilian regime is better than the best form of military regime. That is a lie, as the Brazil would say, far, 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 far. That is a fat lie. Because look at Iraq. Look at Libya. Till today, the people are regretting. No democratic government in Africa will guarantee the Libyans or those from Iraq what Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein did for them. I'm not saying I endorse the administration of Saddam Hussein, but those who live in Libya under those regimes and uh, the Libya and the Iraq, more, they were better than Nigerians. One billion times better than Nigerians. The only difference is you cannot openly criticize the government. You two, then shut up now because the government is providing negative. In Nigeria, yeah, they are not providing anything yet. If you talk, they hound you, they lock you up, they kill you. So, which is better? Mm. You talk in the night, you talk in the morning, in the night, you're dead. They are not providing anything. This other one is always, come on, respect me, don't talk. But I'll give you everything. Free cars, everything. Which government is not better? Which one is better? Mm. So what are we, what, why are we deceiving ourselves? Why are we deceiving ourselves? Well, AU is... So it's not about the nomenclature. It's not about the nomenclature. Mm. It's all about what you get from the system. If you get good governance, so be it. Why are you criticizing the government? Because of bad governance. Why are you criticizing? That's the truth. Yes, the military men are dictators. You dare not criticize them. But what of the civilians? I'm not talking of in other countries though, like America. I'm talking of Nigeria, be specific. What of the civilians when you criticize them? Those that even Dasuki went to court and we are sat down there to say, why must the court be granted and beat him to go? Why? Let him remain there. What do you prefer? What do you call that? What do you call that? Then you come and tell me the what some of this is. No. No. It is All what right. I get as a citizen of a country that will make me loyal to that country. Not when I provide everything. Then this man came again on board now and unleashed the greatest economic with impunity. You're saying we don't have money, we need subsidies, but you're appointing 48 ministers. Why do you even have junior ministers? What are you going to do with junior ministers? Minister for States. What are you doing with them? What are you doing with them? And you say we should tighten our seat belt, and you've loosened your own, even gone to your tailor to buy more materials to add. What are you doing with bulletproof duty? Yes, I can understand with the president and the vice president. What are legislators doing with bulletproof duty? What are they doing with them? Who is killing you? You said they voted for you. Who is killing you? You can't vote on in name status symbol. Your people voted for you. So who is killing you? Are you a criminal? Did you do somebody? That you want to protect yourself? Then when you arrive from the bulletproof vest, try to kill you. Don't they kill presidents? With all the AIDS, your AIDS you have everywhere. And you say, what to call them? Look at the dust plant on bread. And they were giving how many million? How many million? Is? And people are justifying it. You're paid salary to do your work. You're not compelled. You opted. You contested. It was of your own volition. You're paid salary monthly to do your work. About 30, 14, 15, depending. Millions. Then you want to go and pray because he spent extra. Because what are the poor man? You want to give me eight thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Okay, let, let's let, let's move Very forward. Funny. Let's move forward. So we're able to touch all the other headlines before you leave okay. us this morning. Right. The Guardian newspaper. Uh, similar discussions there on the front page of the Guardian. But let's look at forex crisis, worry over policy inconsistencies as CBN brings back BDCs. We saw that uh, news on Thursday, uh, Friday. You know, that decision was taken on Thursday and it broke out on Friday. So wh what's your take on this forex crisis and the new policy that uh, CBN is coming up with? You see, Nigeria, in next country, we, we gallop through the fields of policies to the heights of errors. Whoever is given an assignment will want to create an impression, rightly or wrongly. I don't, I can't really tell you what, what the 
consequences are, I must be honest with you, you know, because uh, I'm not really bothered in the, to, to know what really is going on because of what happened to me last week, which you know you are quite aware. But I hope, that's my only prayer, that, and I've always told you I'm not an economist. I just pray that uh, the economists are going to analyze what the CBN is doing and to ensure that it's in our own interest. Because the present acting governor of CBN obviously seems to me to be rudderless. And he lacks that confidence. Probably he's been made acting based on his, uh, his position in the office. Maybe he's the next, next in command, probably. I don't really know. But from what I gathered from sound economists, even on air, they said the man does, is not what is on us. He doesn't, he doesn't know exactly what he's doing. The only time I feel this thing, my dear, is when the dollar goes up. Mm. If the dollar doesn't go, I'm not bothered about the economic jargons and so on. <laughs> the GDPs and DDP, the food on the table. That's that the bottom line. So, that is the bottom line. So when you go and tell the marketing man the GDP has risen, the nonsense. You're talking about punk or powder that. I yesterday I bought Gary for ten naira. Today why am I buying it for eleven naira? That's mm -hmm. the marketing man. Or I bought Gary for ten naira. Today I'm buying for nine naira. It's as simple as that. Forget all, forget all these kind of jargons and all those things to delude people. The market force will speak for itself. Mm -hmm. The prices in the market will speak for itself. Will let you know whether the government is doing well or not. So on that, I honestly, I am not, I can't really, I'll be pontificating if I, if I try to attempt to, attempt to answer that. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't know. I think we should let open our go this morning. Okay. <laughs> no, don't worry. Just ask, ask one more. Ask one more. Okay. You have more time. I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at something. Once that, I get a signal from there, I'm off. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. That's right. Okay. Maybe we'll go back to uh, Niger a little bit um, because we were talking about the fact that uh, the junta has given a timetable for transition back to the civilian government. Uh, we did all expectedly. That. Yes. Expectedly. But but, but what and do you happy. what do you make of of the fact that ECOWAS has still rejected this? Because some of us thought this will be an opportunity to save face because this is going to be an all-out war, which may not uh, favor ECOWAS all that. that. That's a personal opinion, though. But they refuse to take this uh, opportunity to do the needful and call for dialogue even more than uh, open confrontation. ECOWAS has now rejected the plan of the junta to uh, do the transition <coughs> within three years. What, what do you think the implication of this might be? ECOWAS is just batting on the sticky wickets. Nothing will happen. You know, let me, those in ECOWAS that are saying you must relinquish, you must do this immediately, some of them have been head of presidents or heads, head of states, not even president, because you cannot have a democratic president for more than 10 years. I've been president for 15, 20 years. To what right have you to dictate in this country? That is number one. Number two, ECOWAS, led by Nigeria, because when, if at all, the war, they start this war, 80% of the personnel, the money, everything will come from Nigeria. Can we, can we ever, considering our financial problems, can we embark on this war? Our soldiers ready, these fat belly soldiers that could not contain Boko Haram. And I tell you, there will be sabotage. Even the Boko Haram, you saw the sabotage from the, the military. That is Boko Haram within. There will be sabotage. Because the northern states, that's why those seven northern states, that are already said, because the civilians are the ones talking, does not mean that the military is thinking otherwise. You know, the military is obey the last command. And once the CNC says, go ahead and do this, they cannot tell the CNC, no, we are not going to go. But they will move in and sabotage us. Because they are their brothers. And most people in the army are from the north. Especially those at the uh, bottom of the pecking order. The recruits. They are, they are from the north. And the northerners have been saying, don't go to war. We are also going to suffer. So it will be sabotaged. And those who are not pleased with the Tinubu's administration and policies 
will exploit it to destroy with the final nail of the coffin. You're going to work for what? You've not even solved your own problem yet. Is it because of the uh, lifestyle of Nigerians, our, our idiosyncrasies, secrecies, and peccadillos? And that's what you've done so far. Is it not enough to ignite a Is it not enough? These are your policies you've come up with to strangle Is it not enough to ignite a And the ladies to the legislators as well. These are the things that lead to a coup. Now you are afraid that if nothing is done in Niger, there might be a, it might be replicated here in Nigeria. If whether you do anything in Nigeria or not, when the day comes, when the time comes, it will happen. These things are spontaneous reactions when it comes to revolution. It is only in the military that they will be planning. But look, at Nigerians are happy. That's, I, you know, I, I always say, I say, when legality is antithetical to democratic ethics, and a threat to national coercion and the economy of a nation. That legality must not be allowed to understand legitimacy. What is important in governance is legitimacy, not legality. But people always think the other way. The, what is the, uh, what, uh, um, mili the military decrees are laws, like Decree 4 and Decree 2, under a decree. Decrees are laws. They are legal, but are they legitimate? That's the question. Are they accepting? So it's not all about legality, legality. That's why you have the issue of equity in law. Because equity is meant to palliate the asperities of the law. It's not all about legality. It is, is it like that? Look, you push somebody to the wall. The, the, the cruelest tyranny in the world is that perpetrated under the shield of the law. So when people say, uh, yes, it, uh, we, Nigeria don't like, but that is a law, that is a law, that is a law, it will backfire soon. Because there cannot be a correlate tyranny than that, but it is under the shield of the law. So it's not all about law, law. You look at legitimacy, legitimacy, legitimacy. Because every spirit revolts at tyranny. And the dictators act act of uh, in reliance they act in tandem with the laws they put for themselves to benefit themselves so it's not all about whether it is legal it is whether it is legitimate so they should allow the nigerians the people are happy if they say three years four years if they say forever let them fight themselves there will be another soldier that will come up to topple this government mm -hmm. we all faced it in nigeria after the 1966 coup We've been having military, then there was this shagari type. After that, what happened? We've been having military, military, military. Now we are talking of 20, 23 or 24 years of democracy. Allow the Nigerians. And even if you have to play international politics, there are ways you can go about it. Like what the Americans do in other countries, what uh, the, the British will do in other countries, Russia and so on. What the internal politics, they sponsor one group against the other group. But it is from within, not to send your soldiers down there to go and sit a gun. Look, I will even resist it. Who the hell are you? If you're a president, I'm also a head of state in my country. No matter how small it is. Oh, well. No matter how small it is. If you're a president of America, I am the president of Niger, you must respect me. If you're coming to Niger, would you don't seek for visa? No, you don't come and impose yourself, come and dictate to me. Who the hell are you? Where you from? Yes, you might have more powers and so but I will also have alliances with other countries to disgrace you, and that is what they want to do. And, that and is there are so many countries that are ready. Yeah, that is what... Lots of lives. Are we talking about Are we talking about... Why, why are you going into this war for crisis? Your country is burning. Your whole country is burning. You're leaving your whole house. You're going to fight and to put, out, put out the fire and another message. Are you Indeed. calling yourself a leader? Opunabo, indeed, we hope that they do not go to war with Niger because Niger Africa cannot handle the ripple effect of that. Thank you. We don't want to see war. Thank you, Thank you so much for your time on of the press this Thank morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank you. Opunabo Nkotaria has been our guest on of the press. We'll take a break and come back with our first hot topic. Do stay with us.